to a great deal. And uh, part of that uh, goal is to find different social media outlets for us to work on. So thanks, Dennis. No problem. Now let me, where did I put down my thing? There we go. So let's start out with a, how many of you really understand what LinkedIn is? Good, then we can all start out on the same level. All right, let's see if I can turn down some lights here. Good. Well, basically our agenda today is to help you build your digital persona. I'm going to ask um, this gentleman, could you pair up with one of these two folks? Uh, and I hope we have another person to come in to pair up with yourself as well so that you can help each other in case you run into things that are not easy. Uh, I will come around. All you need to do is ask, and I will definitely come around to give you some input. Now, what's your digital persona? That's really the key social media tool that you need for people to find you. If you're interested in being a recluse or in being a monk, a Shinto monk, uh, you would not be interested in LinkedIn. LinkedIn will give you an opportunity to find jobs. My goal is to begin with this type of boot camp so that you can build an electromagnetic LinkedIn home page where people will come to you. I've had the opportunity a couple years ago to get an award from LinkedIn in being in the top 5% of LinkedIn users being viewed across 200 million sites. So that's a, a pleasant uh, recognition that I can bring people to my site because something I've done interests them. I use the right keywords. So let's also begin with uh, a particular video. Muted there. Mm -hmm. Do you need this muted? Uh, no, you can turn that on. Uh, on. On right now, yeah. If you're watching this, chances are good you want to get a job. You want to go from student to rising star, and you want to avoid eating the same meal over and over and over again. Good news, you're in the right place. That's right, LinkedIn. It's not just for top executives. It's not just for old people with heavy briefcases. It's for you, and it's the perfect place for you to start your professional story. Say you want to get a job in New York City. You've never been there before, but that's okay because you have LinkedIn on your side. You start by creating your profile. You give it love because you know it's what recruiters are looking for day and night. It's your resume that never sleeps. It's your flashing neon sign that says, hire me, hire me, for the love of all that is good in this world, hire me. Then you start making connections. Alumni working in New York? Yes. Recruiters at top companies in New York? Yes. Your mom's best friend? Yes. You start imagining whose shoes you want to walk in. You think, wow, this is a lot of deep stuff to consider. You shake yourself out of it and start searching for jobs. Whoa, that's a lot of jobs for students. Time to get down to business. You start to tailor your profile. You start applying. You feel empowered, in control, like you should be CEO. That gives you an idea. You look up all the CEOs of all the companies you want to work at. You see one of them went to your university. Then it hits you. You see a clear path from campus to career. You feel like you can see the future. You wonder if you're psychic. Should you start a hotline? No, no, back to plan A. You keep tailoring and connecting and applying, and before you know it, you start getting responses. First a few, then more, then an interview and then you're hired and that's when the real learning begins so my goal is certainly to get you to the point oh I get that yeah get you to the point where you can start being introduced to people and get connected but Having connections is not the only thing you need to do. You have to build relationships with those connections. So I have a spring course coming up 
that's an advanced course. We'll talk more about those kind of relationships. I thought I had. There it is. Just hide that. Hide. All right, we're going to take a couple of approaches today on what to put in your LinkedIn profile. How many of you brought or already uploaded a photograph to your LinkedIn site? Everyone? Everyone? Oh, sorry, I said an or. How many of you have uploaded your photograph? Okay, so we have one person who has not. Just click edit. I'm sorry that I don't know your name. I'm sorry I don't know your name. Eling. Okay. Eling, uh, all you have to do is click on the edit button. And you will notice here an icon for the photograph. Click on that, choose your file, and upload the file. All right. Now, the area I want you, the rest of you, to be thinking in terms of is this particular LinkedIn address. Okay? That LinkedIn address for most of you probably now has a whole bunch of letters and numbers. Am I correct? It looks like a dog's breakfast, right? Well, we want to give you the capability to customize that so that you can use that information. The edit contact info? Great. You can use this information to be able to put on your letterhead and your resumes. So in order to do that, first I would want you to enter some contact information here. Now, first contact information is an email account. The reason you do this is that if people are trying to connect to you, and they don't know your email address and they've never met you, they have a hard time sending you a connect invitation. So put in an email address that you're comfortable with. By clicking on the pencil, which gets you to edit the field. You, you haven't done the editing side yet. Go to profile. Okay. Edit. Okay. Um, could you go to your profile? 
and I'm sorry that I don't read Chinese. Does that say edit? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, no, uh, do ignore that for now. Click the X. All right, now edit information. There you go. Good, you've got a lot of it filled in already. Do any of you have a blog? No, go back to your actual profile. And hit edit first. And then edit right there. Have you already got there? Okay, great. Great. Let's see where you're at. Alrighty, I'm just going to edit. Yeah. Good. And the same. Now, for all of you, I do not recommend you put your address. All right? Because there are people who are stalkers on many social networks. However, I put my address because this is a UPS store. That's where I pick up my mail. So I don't care if they stalk the UPS store. And I haven't had, in the many years I've been on, no one has ever stalked me. So I'm just recommending, especially for women, never put your address there. Also, do not put in your birthday or other personal information later in your profile. Too much information allows some people to steal your identity. I do recommend, if you wish to be called, to put a telephone number. If you do not wish to be called, leave that blank. Now, I'm on WeChat, as well as I have a blog called Knowledge Cactus. So if any of you have a website or a blog, please enter that information now and choose the custom entry. Otherwise, you won't be able to show the name. All that will come up is the word website. And what you really want is to have the name of the website be searchable. Do you have your own personal website? No. I oh, okay. Oh, uh, no, I wouldn't recommend it. Not right now. Because if they, uh, one person brought up they might want to put in their ePortfolio URL. I don't recommend it because if they click on it, then they're presented with a password requirement. And you cannot send them to a direct page within your portfolio. I've been recommending for some time we use LinkedIn as our ePortfolio management system. However, I am just a wee little low-level professor in the business school, so no one wants to listen to me. All right, so everyone has this information entered. Am I correct? Uh, well, for the, yeah. Um, for the website, you, I mean, I noticed that you just have the, the name of it. Do you not want to put any URL in? Yes. So if you go under custom for that, first put in the name, then the URL. Yes. Um, because your mic is so close, yeah. they can't hear the questions. So can you just oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We're going to yes. Okay. Um, either here. No. Let's go back to edit. There we are. Now, when you edit the link itself, uh, so go back to your profile, um, close the area you were on, and you should be able to edit. Uh, great. It's, it's right underneath where you were when you had the page open. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah edit right there. No, click. Oh, you've already got yours in. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you're way ahead of us. Okay. I have trifocals. I can't, can't exactly see that small. Did you? All right. So edit here. Then. There you go. Now, when you're presented with a window here for your URL for your site, in just a second, I'll bring one more person up to speed. Stay in the edit mode. And put it down. Oh, there we go. And it should be right about here. Edit. 
Yeah. Have you got it as well? You can purchase my first. Oh, okay. And you got all right. No, it's okay. Click on edit. So we'll we'll walk everyone through that. All right. Click on edit. Now here you're presented with a lot of information. Don't freak out at this stage. Uh, let me walk you through some of the pieces of information you're seeing. It's asking you if you want your profile to be visible. Most of you do. The only time you want it to be invisible is if you have to make a lot of changes. Okay? Because otherwise all of your contacts receive a LinkedIn message that you've changed your profile every time you change a section. And they will get very annoyed with you. So what you want to do is go invisible for a short period of time. Here are the different elements that should be visible. The defaults are basic, picture, headline, summary, current positions, etc. So please make sure you have all of these clicked on before we proceed further. Make sure one of them is checked. Whatever shows up available to you. Now, many of you are still on the free one, so not as many things will show up for you. Great. Okay, great. Now, to change the public profile URL, could you scroll up for me, uh, Dennis? Uh, let's. Uh, I, there's another checkbox we will go to in options, uh, which. But okay, you're right. Let's go invisible at this stage. Thanks. It'll be a little bit easier. Uh, can you scroll up a little bit? Oh, okay. There we are. Now, down in the right-hand corner is an area that says your current URL. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, current URL. Customize your public URL. Click on it. And at this stage, you'll be presented with a window. I often suggest to people to, to try to use their name with initials. Okay? And that way it's easier for you to remember when you're trying to put it in your resume and as well as your your uh, letterhead okay so just use your name it will look to see if anyone else has used that have both of you got a unique URL now great all of you unique URL okay have you found a unique URL yeah, it's all right. Regretfully, it's very difficult in Chinese for me to do this, but let's see what I can find. Uh, oh, you're still at the public profile. We have to be in the edit mode. Okay. Now, edit here. There. That's what we're looking for. Now we move up. And oh, yours is right there. All right, so customize there. So your URL will always be www.linkedin.com slash in slash whatever you assign to it. When you're done, set the custom URL and make sure it shows up on your profile. Now, let's go. Let's scroll up. Yeah. Yeah, go all the way. Now, do not be intimidated. No, you're going down. Sorry. No. <laughs> do not be intimidated by other people's long LinkedIn profiles. Someday you too will have 45 years of experience and you'll be able to tell the story. But what I'm really interested in having you do is to properly learn how to. Oh, we're out of uh, edit mode. Uh, go up to profile. Edit profile. So we want to be in edit mode again. Great, and scroll up a bit. Thanks. No, thank 
keep the uh, face in the other part. That's great. So the first thing is your tagline. You could put in that you're an undergrad student. You could put in that you are a rocket scientist. I don't think anyone qualifies here for that right now. Uh, you could put in that the type of work or role you're doing in your part-time job right now. Or you could put in your aspirational goal, uh, such as looking for sales management position or continuing education, uh, business education, or whatever education area you're in. The key thing is look at these special characters. This is what's going to differentiate and make it easier for other people to see your writing. Remember I sent you a file called special characters and therefore all these types of special characters are in that file that I emailed to you. And you can send your or you can edit this by clicking on any of these fields. For example, let's click on the edit of my name which is the pencil. So very simple. Now if you want initials in there, great. I don't recommend initials. First name, last name only. And no salutations or uh, John Smith the fourth junior. None of those things. Because those things cloud up people searching for you. So just keep it a simple name. We'll do a cancel on that. Thanks. Now, let's edit the actual tagline. Here is where you enter the information and put in those special characters. If you wish to put special characters in later because you might not have access to the file I sent, just put two of those, what are the, what's the term for it? There are two, uh, straight, there's a straight line over the, mm, not on your keyboard. Ah, yes. Way over on the right side of most of your keyboards, there's a backslash, and then if you hit shift, there's a straight bar. Do you see or not see the straight bar? Okay. Do you, you got it? Right there. Shift and that. What I would do at this place time is just put in a placeholder by putting two straight bars. Make sure there are spaces on each side the two bars together. Good. Terrific. You've already figured out how to use the special characters. Good. Now, the, one of the other reasons is things show up exceptionally well in lists if you have ways to separate phrases. Those phrases are also going to be searchable. So this is what you want people to find you with. When they do a search on LinkedIn, if you have some unique words to describe you as a person, not necessarily your job role, please put them in there. And you have a, quite a bit of space to deal with. Cancel. And then edit the location. Where I've got Great Salt Lake City area. You can put whatever you'd like based on where you want people to really locate you. You could put another country if you wish. The reason you have a postal code in there is that people can do a search of individuals within a postal code region and therefore you would be found. So if you're looking for a job in the Salt Lake City area, 84105, and then pick Greater Salt Lake Area and that will include all the way down from Provo up to Bountiful. And then put the industry you're in. If you're a student, put higher ed. If you're a consultant, choose one of the areas. And if you want to emphasize an area you're in, even if you're a student, uh, click on that drop-down list and choose something that would be relevant to the work you do. You got a lot to choose from there. And you can come back and re-edit that at any time. Yes? Quick question on the uh, location. 
that necessarily where we are or where we want to be working? Uh, it's where we are. Now, if you do want to be uh, seen somewhere else, it would be valuable. Uh, for example, New York, in your case, would be better for you. Uh, it's your target audience when they're doing a search. So you can still put in... Um, that's all right. You can still put in a particular location name, but it'll always be tied to your postal code. So if you want a different location, you either have to find a different postal code, uh, and then it'll give you location areas to choose from, like greater New York area. We can cancel on that. Thanks. Are we all at the same place right now? Anyone need some extra time? All right, let's now go into the area of background summary. And this is where you edit the background summary. So just click on edit or the pencil. Now I'd ask each of you to come with a, a short summary of your background and experience. This is where you would cut and paste that in to this area. Now notice how I've tried to optimize when people read my site certain elements. I don't talk about being a professor right away. In fact, that's boring. Okay? You need a hook here. Your first two sentences have to hook people on wanting to read more. And I've had incredible compliments from all over the world of people who said, when I read your profile, I knew you were passionate and enthusiastic about education. So, you know, I jump out of bed with a smile every morning, a bounce in my step because of my passion for research, teaching, higher education. You have to find a way to describe yourself as a hook so that people will be interested in reading more about you. None of you are boring people. You're all passionate people. But you have to figure out what words to use to describe that passion. Because most people will read no further than the second or third line of your summary before they decide to either leave your site or continue down. That's what the web analytics suggest. And if we scroll down through this, notice I've got an experience in the summary area using these type of bullets. Uh, we'll call those right arrow bullets. So if you've got experience in certain areas, even if it's just in the classroom, you want to highlight that up in the summary section, and you may talk about it in detail later. Now, that particular, um, I mean, those, is that, is that particular reason for the bullets? Yes. From a usability engineering point of view and user experience point of view, those type of bullets will automatically get the reader's eye to go to the right of it. So instead of just a round or square bullet, you want something that guides their eye across the page, across the screen. They are to use round bullets or square bullets. Uh, but up here again, you're, you're trying to summarize your experience in some fashion so that people are going to be very interested to seek further information about you. And then if we scroll down again, uh, within that box, there we are. So then I talk about different specialties I have. Now for each of you, you'll have two, maybe two or three bullets there. Summarize something interesting enough, even if it's some of your uh, social responsibility work, where you're volunteering in organizations, you're involved outside in the community. Emphasize that here. You will re-emphasize it later, but it's important for people to realize in your summary that you are doing things more than is expected by a traditional student. You're selling them on reading more. This is a marketing tool for you. Let's cancel that. Thanks. Now, at the end of the summary, you have the capability to put in some of the presentations you've done in the classroom or some other 
uh, work that you have created. You could even upload, this is where you upload material, you can even upload your resume here so that people can automatically download it. Make sure when you've uploaded your resume, it is spotless, no grammatical errors, no spelling errors. I promise you, as soon as anyone runs across an error in your resume, they're off your site. You have to be pristine, precise in what you convey to people because you're creating your digital persona. You are actually creating an image in front of them that they have never seen before other than your photograph. Now the photograph also has to be very business-like. It should not be a Facebook-like photograph. The critical success factor here is if it's business-like, you will be treated as a business person. This is not a Facebook site. Do not put yourself in a ski outfit or having a ski thing on or with a bunch of people at the pub. That's Facebook. Uh, let me turn that off, sorry. Who would call me? Nobody ever calls me. Ah, my wife. Excuse me. Good, okay. Unanticipated distraction. All right. So oh, once you start to build your site, one of the things, I, the reason I gave you my business card, send me the URL of your site at some point. Ask me to review it and criticize it. I'll constructively review it for you and suggest to you any enhancements or improvements that will make your site better. But uh, one of the areas I recommend for many of my learners is take some of the team presentations you've done that are really good or take some of the other presentations you've done in class, upload them here. To upload them, it's very simple. Let's go back to the, the top of this um, section. So when we do edit, click on edit again, and then if we go all the way down past the summary, when we get to here, uh, uh, no, that should have been it. We should have been able to see have, where you have it now. Can you click edit to see if you can add a file? Right here. Here? We're here. Ah, there it is. That square thing in above here. Yep. If you cl click the square thing in above, it'll drop down. Go back to edit. Profile? No, you're in the public profile. Edit profile. Great. So when we go down, this will be a drop down box in this area. And it says add a link or upload a document. If any of you have a place where you have a document that's on another site, you can put the URL in there or you can upload the document itself. Your resume there is a very good, make sure it has a terrific cover on it. In other words, here, no, normally when you put up a resume, it'll start out with your header information, your job history, your education history. Put a cover page on it that expresses more about who you are with a, some really neat graphics. Because as you can see, when we scroll down to where those uploads are, uh, You've got to make it interesting for them to want to download it. If it's just text, you're not creating the interest. Everything you do here has to create a hook in their mind to more information about you. Any questions in this area? Now, you can also post YouTube videos. Do not post the one of you skateboarding naked. Okay, this is highly unrecommended. Make sure you post professional YouTube videos or other videos and place them in a format that's easy to read across multiple platforms. Which formats would that probably comprise? Anybody want to guess? All of you do videos, don't you? No? A WMV, which is uh, the Windows uh, uh, movie file, uh, MP3 or MP4 would be very good formats. 
Okay? And there are utilities out there that will allow you to convert any video that's on your phones if you use that for taking the videos into those, those formats. Just contact me and I'll provide that information. Thanks, Dennis. You're, you're doing great navigation here. <laughs> Can you move us a little bit further down? Now, do any of you have this on your right-hand side right now? All right. This is the, the really important area when you're doing lots of editing. Either turn it on or off. So you can be uh, running silent or submerged or invisible, but if you don't turn it off here, um, you end up with comments going out to all your connections saying that you've made a recent change. So every change you make in a different section sends out another message. Uh, I accidentally did it one night when I was revising my stuff. I was at 2 in the morning, and I ended up having emails by 4 in the morning that said, would you please turn that bloody switch off because we don't care about all the little changes you're making. So you don't want to annoy your connections. Now, when we get to the experience section, this is where we add a position. Have any of you already added a position to good? Now let's edit that area and look again at some of the things we put in. Yeah, it regretfully it always flips you right to the top. So a little bit uh, further up. There we go. So this is the first position. Now what you want to be able to do is to bring up the logos of any company that you're working with that has a LinkedIn company page. So you noticed I had the Westminster College logo on the right hand side. The way you do that is when you're putting in the name, you can put whatever you want here and then edit the display name. Uh, for example, uh, before we do it, uh, can you just highlight the company name as it currently is? This is one of those little wrinkles. Thanks. Copy. And now let's edit the display name. Now here's what happens. The display name is what shows up here, which we had there. And now let's click on the link called Change Company. Now notice the company name can be different from the display name. This is where we would put in Westminster College just as a word and as soon as we do, so if we type in Westminster College, great, and then click on. So now we've got to change the display name because I want the Bill and Vive Gore School of Business to show up and we do not have a separate logo. So we've cut we put it in edit in that. I've put the display name that I want people to actually see, but we still captured the logo of the company we work for. So if you're working for different divisions of a company, you may wish to do this. The title, whatever you want. Do not be fictitious with your title. Uh, chief uh, uh, Food Preparation Master Chef. If you're not that person, do not put that in. In other words, put a title or a role that is really comparable to what you're doing in this organization. For many of you, you may wish to put Westminster College first or put it in the education area. You get more space here to add different information about maybe courses you've taken, etc. But you don't want to list all your courses. It, that's boring. Don't list the number of the courses. That's irrelevant in any other institution. Group your courses with bullets so that they make sense. You know, maybe your communication courses in one area, business courses in another, management in another, marketing in another. The time period is, is important. You can work at more than one place at a time. So if you've got one or two jobs, you as long as you click I currently work here on each of those jobs, 
they will be at the top of your list. So this is what's called reverse chronological sequence. You'll start at the most recent and other positions after that will be <coughs> earlier in your career. Please don't list that you did strawberry picking in Minnesota, okay? List only those jobs you want to impress someone with. Now, I had a very imaginative young fellow who was a dishwasher in a restaurant, a very good restaurant, mind you. Now, putting dishwasher in a restaurant does not create esteem, does it? Do you, do you want that associated with your name? Hopefully not. So what he put is kitchen quality control officer. Now, he wasn't lying because everything that went out of that kitchen, he had to make sure was clean. So find a way to be imaginative without lying. And the reason I say without lying is if anyone ever catches you fraudulently presenting yourself on LinkedIn, you will have a very hard time living it down because that will go viral and somebody will blog about it. And then anytime someone does a search, they will find that blog with your name that says Michael Sutton is, is lying and a fraudulent guy. Always put what you're doing. You can enhance the title. In fact, what he was doing was creating humor. Anybody who knows the kitchen and food prep area, will, would, he's chief cook and bottle washer, right? right? However, he found a way to make it humorous. Put the location where you're working, and then a description. If we could go to the top of that description list. Whoops. Great. That's all right. All right. Now, again, description. Do not do a narrative. Do not talk about what you do. Simply place bullets here. And you can find ways to break it up. Notice, to get from a usability engineering point of view, to get the eye to go to the right, I use the right arrow bullet. But underneath, if I want subcategories, I use period, period, uh, diamond, period, period, to break it up. Find ways to break it up. The key thing is most people will scan this. They will not read it. So they're scanning for keywords. And you've got to provide the right kind of keywords. And we can cancel from that one. Do we? All right. Oh, yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, stay right where you're at. All right. Now, under that position, each position, you can have people recommend you. So if you're a learner in school here, you can send an invitation for one of your instructors to recommend you. Then That's different than endorsements, and I'll show you the difference in a second. Now, you'll notice under this area, what also appears are projects, five honors and awards, and a number of recommendations from learners. You want to try to get very truthful, authentic, worthwhile recommendations. What you do not want is your best bud to say, hey, John is just one awesome guy. That is not a good recommendation. Again, this is not Facebook. What you want someone to recommend you on are specific skills. So if you're asking someone for a recommendation, please ask them to concentrate on this area of my skills or this area of my skills. Michael, how did you get those on there? These are automatically placed based on uh, the, the uh, place that I've worked. So when people do a recommendation for you, they will be asked, did you work with this guy at this place? Or were you a student of this professor at this place? That's how it will know where to automatically link it here. Sorry, this is different than endorsements, right? Correct. And I'll get to endorsements in a sec. <laughs> you don't have to have any.
I'll tell you why we use endorsements in a second. So let's scroll down a little further, Dennis. On a particular job, you can also have videos, things you've done at that job. Okay? So again, just like at the summary level, here you can add videos or any other type of file to demonstrate what you did at that organization. Now, what we're, I'm going to quickly browse through the remainder of my work experience. You add one new position or place for everywhere you want people to know you've worked. And if you do have problems with the logo showing up or not, let me know. Uh, one of the things you do is under the search capability in the link, LinkedIn, look for a company with the company name. If it doesn't exist in LinkedIn, you won't be able to put in a logo. Uh, you should be able to create your own company uh, profile. All right, but I believe premium is required for that. So over time, what you really want is for people to be looking at the logos. Then they'll look at the details. That's one of the reasons you want to use the name of the firms. I'm going to quickly browse down and get to the next section. All right, the next section available is projects. Do all of you see projects there? You've got it, uh, uh, Miguel, you see projects? No? All right. Are you in the... Yes, you are. I'll keep going down. Oh, because there's nothing in it. Keep going up. So for some of you, you don't have any projects in yet. The projects section will appear in the upper right-hand corner of your edited profile. There'll be a plus sign beside the word projects. This is where I would recommend each of you put in all and every internship you've done. Also, any major project you've done in a class. Just describe it in one sentence. Let's edit the... First one, okay. Go to the very top. All right. No, then you've already got something in projects. Go further down. Keep going. Keep going. There, you've already got projects. Okay. So once you have one project in there, you won't find it in the upper right-hand area anymore. So in this area, you want to add. Let's just hit the add button. And what information is normally asked for? The name of the project, not necessarily the place you did it. And then under occupation, notice it will put the project under a particular job or organization you've worked for when you hit the choose drop-down list under occupation. So once you've filled in your work experience, you can come back and do your projects against any organization you've done work for. Could this be something like a, like a thing, thing, for example, like a long-term consulting project or um, like a project or something that I did like, like Yeah, that'd be great. And you were usually with a firm at that time, right? Yeah. But, but your, yours is a corporate entity. So uh, fill in all of the experience that you would want to talk about doing projects in. That's why I recommend as well, you put Westminster there as a student, either an MBA learner or an undergrad, and then put a number of the projects you've done in your classroom, a marketing initiative, uh, a, pro a, a live case at a local company, things that will show people you have terrific business experience. Should we take a five minute bio break? Please, all right, let's be back at five after. I keep forgetting that.
read you the question. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to carry a card out here that says, uh, ask the question to yourself. Mm. As soon as the question is finished being asked, mm. I'm going to ding the bell. That would be great. Yeah. Of course, it keeps people awake who are on the uh, thing itself, too. <laughs> I, as you can see, I'm not used to being wired for sound when I do this. <laughs> That's great. You're doing great. Brian, are you recording from time? No, 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 no. I'm no. actually running two separate I know. computers, and I forget which mouse is. And I really appreciate you doing this for me. Yeah. Um, that's the only other thing I see is the collision when we have everything on one workstation. Yeah. But that can't be helped right now. This is as far into the modern age as we're getting. <laughs> oh, this is further into the modern age. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so like the company in this one didn't have like a logo like right. Ad Lab, like can you add? No, you can't. Like they have to have a company page. But yeah, but Government Savings Bank, where is that? In Thailand? In Thailand but, like, yeah, uh, they didn't have it like I don't know. Have you searched for it here? So know. highlight that or just put in the word Government Savings Bank? Let's let's look at what this one is. See if that's in Thailand. Yeah, this is ah. in Thailand, but uh -huh. I guess they didn't really update it. No, they they haven't uh, put a good logo in there. It's too bad. Maybe you should communicate with them and mm -hmm. say, hey, social media is really important. Please put a logo up. All right. All right. Now we could put see if we even take what I call a placeholder logo. It'll at least refer them to this page if mm -hmm. they want to look at it. All right, let's go back to the original page you were on. Yeah. And uh, let's do the edit, or we're in edit. Yes, no, edit. And let's go down there. Okay, click edit here. Now, here's what I want you to do. Copy that first, because sometimes it gets lost. Copy the whole phrase. Good. Good. Now, change company. Put in the company name. Good. Click on that. And we don't want to edit the uh, display name any differently. Now, hit Save. And at least a logo should come up that we can float over. Yeah. yeah, I think I uploaded the photo. Alright, so even the placeholder that is on the company profile doesn't get here. Sorry about that. Because if you hover over that, mm -hmm. uh, it'll take you to the okay. corporate page. And that's what we really want people to be able to do. Uh, I think yeah. you should get in touch with them. Okay. Make sure they come to the 21st century. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, oh, at least B and H and Adis showed up. Now, wh what company is this? All right. Uh, you search here in the um, transliterated name. It's called uh, I don't know in English like. Okay, so let's um, see 
if we can search for it in the weekend, or show up, or show up, however you want to. SHUA. Take out the com and the other side of the front. But this person is trying to use it, right? So let's see whether it shows up for him and how he did it. Oh, right. So you can't see them anymore. Okay. Now, another way. Uh, go ahead and try to put the Chinese uh, uh, glyphs in there. Um, uh, what is for Chinese? Is that it there? Yeah. All right. Put that in. Uh, okay, but let's go to companies only. No, it doesn't show up. Sorry. May not even have a company uh, uh, page on LinkedIn. Okay. All right, let us continue. So one of the things project is you can also add team members who are connected to you and they, if they are on LinkedIn. Okay? So this provides cross-linking to your site as well as to their site. So you want to try to build those kind of cross connections with people you've worked with before. And if we can just go down to and, and cancel that. And let's see where else I can I want to take us. Most of them aren't aren't reviewers on journals yet. Now it, you're in currently in which section that we're working on? Projects. So this would also be a place if you've taken any specialized training or done work in your community that's volunteer work that you want to talk about. Question? So what is the extent of, of artifacts you should put in there? Anything that will impress a potential employer. Oh, thank you. Well, the question was, uh, we've got to get the audience to hear the questions too. The question was, um, what was it again? So, what kind of artifacts? Artifact? Should we put in there? What kind of artifacts should we put in there? Do not try not to put in that you got second class in Boy Scouts. Okay, that's that's not a big. What you if you got Eagle Scout, I'd put it in there. I mean, in Canada we have Queen Scout, Scout, but. I'm sure that one of the things you want to do is impress upon your potential employers things that you do either in the community or things you do to learn outside of the community. Let's say you go to a seminar outside of the community to upgrade your skills. Definitely put that in projects. If you do some community service work, such as cleaning highways with uh, big Brothers, Big Sisters, or some other organization. Definitely put that in there. People love to see what you do as volunteer work. You got a question, Miguel? No, oh, okay. Yes? Sorry, let's start again. Yeah. I see a company, so I come to 
I'm useful for having such a partner. Um, my lead recipient of grades when I come to co back to college and drop out the carrier. Um, my lead recipient is happy about it. So I can also have a link in with this, this team. Like the team. You could, yes. Yeah. Uh, so describe the project in the company in this section and then find him on LinkedIn and where it says add member then uh, click on that find his name and it will put it in there automatically does that help did I did we have a ding on that one uh, <laughs> all right uh, the question that was asked was uh, can you uh, add someone from a previous project that you may not have as a company on your list, uh, yes, do it under projects instead of companies if you wish. Now, uh, whoops, we're back up here. If we could scroll down a bit. Ah, that's okay. So, uh, again, volunteer work. Indicate your membership dates when you describe it and your membership in other associations. Some of you may be in Delta Mu Delta. That would go here under projects. It will also go under organizations later, but you want to re-emphasize something like um, a sorority, a fraternity, or a, a student organization that you're working with on campus. And we'll scroll down a bit more. All right, honors and awards. If you have not entered honors and awards yet, it should be in the upper right-hand corner of your profile that you're editing right now. Remember where you found a project before? If you go right to the top, right-hand side, there should be a plus sign beside honors and awards. Now again, notice in honors and awards, I use different types of bullets. Try to vary those. This is not an area that people are going to spend a lot of time scanning. They'll actually read it once they get to the honors and awards area. So that's why I use a different type of bullet. So for my military experience, I have several awards and uh, recognitions. Should I put as the title military awards and then list them all underneath that, or should I do them all individually? Uh, the question was, having previous military experience, uh, should all of the awards be listed underneath one title of military awards, or should they be listed separately under each award name? I would recommend each award name separately. Okay, Because one of the things that will be taking place in LinkedIn in the future is, because of so many military officers and enlisted men on, they will have those campaigns and awards and you'll have badges that will start to show up beside your name. So start now, and in the future, you'll see that logo like you would wear uh, on your uniform will start to show up. Now, in these areas, break them down by different types of awards. What you really want to emphasize to people, especially as learners, is that you're achieving certain awards here in college or within the community. So if you make Dean's List, definitely put Dean's List and the year that you made it. Uh, what I wouldn't not put is your GPA. As a student, you should not be telling people what your GPA is. And here's the reason. Nobody cares. Once you, when you're, if you're being interviewed by someone, that's the normal time to disclose your GPA. Or if you've sent them a transcript. Putting your GPA here will actually turn employers off. They do not want to see your GPA. What they want to see is that you've graduated or that you're in process. If you do have a conversation with them and they ask it, sure, let them know what your GPA is. But don't broadcast it. It's tacky. Let's scroll down a little further. Now, some of you, that's great just a little bit further up. There's now a publications area. Many of the MBA learners that have worked 
have co-published, and some undergraduates, uh, academic papers with me. This would be a good place to show such a publication. At the same time, because you're in school, you may want to emphasize some of the essays you've created as part of your profile here, just like you would in the ePortfolio system. So, the, But only your best, and it better be highly edited. Make sure that it's totally clean. Again, you don't want... If you put anything out on the Internet, which we'll call digital dirt, it will follow you everywhere. You will never get rid of that digital dirt off your feet. It's on a server somewhere. So before you upload anything, have two or three people review it, reread it, spell check it, grammar check it. In fact, any of the information you're putting up here, especially if it's more than two or three words, I highly recommend you write them first in Word and you cut and paste into here. Because in Word you can do a quick spell check and grammar check and then place it in here. I have run across so many people with spelling errors on their profile. Learners as well as professionals. So it's not just learners that, that stumble in this way. Everything you create to build your digital persona has to be pristine. No mistakes are permitted. Because one of the things you're emphasizing is your professionalism. People don't want to hire a graphic artist who can't spell. You know, they wouldn't want to hire a, a doctor who can't do surgery well. I don't know any of you, uh, one of the reasons I moved from Canada down to here was I could choose my doctor. The last thing I wanted was McGill University, class of 2007, average C-. minus. You do not want someone with a C- minus doing surgery on you, right? You want top of the class. So it's very, very important that you emphasize everything in your pro profile as being top, superior to anything around you. That will put you ahead of your peers who do not yet or have not yet created their digital persona. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, publication, is it only for written publications? No. You can put written or uh, videos, podcasts. podcasts, any of these. Because you'll be able to supply a link. Uh, could you do me a favor and click on edit of the first one? Yep. So notice here what the information is. Uh, for reasons I don't know, I've lost my URL to that page. Could you just cancel a second? And let's go back and click on it. Yeah, click. Oh, sorry. You got to save. Uh, the done editing at the very top. Uh, too bad I got that much experience. It's boring. Boring. All right. Save and exit for a second. Now let's go back down. Uh, complete your profile. Whoops. Button. Complete your profile. Oh, no, I really didn't want that, sorry. All right, go back down, and let's see if we have a link. These are things you do have to keep track of. Over time, even LinkedIn will have an occasional burp, and they lose some information. So one of the things I do is save a PDF of my whole profile about once a month. I just send it to a PDF instead of to a printer, just in case something happens and I go in one day and there's nothing there. I don't want to have to, I can't remember all that information. So let's, uh, let's see, no, it's down further, down further. Keep going, keep going, great, keep going. Oh, there we are, so back up a little bit. So let's, let's click on here, nothing, yeah, nothing. Huh. Is this under publications? Yeah. It used to have a link to the actual publication. So if we, uh, let's go back to edit mode and edit that one. So you can put a URL to anything. Um, uh, Mr. Mead. <laughs> Whose first name I just had a brain fart on. David. David. Um, oh yeah, we're still in edit mode. Let's go where we were. Way down at the bottom. I really appreciate your help on this, Dennis. I'm sure it is. Uh, I have a, this is why I, you see, I, I don't have a pointed end on this. 
because occasionally I will do something stupid like that. It has happened before. So my eye-hand coordination is not that of a fighter pilot, you know. Is this what you want, right? Sorry? This one right here? Uh, that's where we were, yeah. So let's continue down. So in this area, highlight any excellence award, any type of award that's significant and will impress an employer. You're not trying to impress your friends. Facebook, if you won the uh, uh, junior high school soccer tournament, use Facebook for that. Here, nobody cares about your high school. I do not recommend you put your high school in your profile. You're at university now. It doesn't matter anymore where you went to school. If anybody wants to know that, they can contact you. The, as you're emerging as new professionals, it's incredibly important you let go of those terrific high school days. They're gone. They're history. The fact you were a star football player, varsity, uh, computer geek, whatever, totally irrelevant now. Nobody will care about that information. What they're really concerned about now is the volunteer work you do, the job career type jobs you do now, and even the lowest job can show progression. So going back to my young colleague who put in um, chief quality control uh, officer for the kitchen, what he also then, what he was promoted to um, a front uh, uh, to maitre d, same company. So he went from being chief cook and bottle washer to maitre d. So he put it in maitre d uh, under that same company and what that shows is progression. So every time you move within a company to a new role, put it in there. Companies want to see that you've been somewhere longer than six months and they also want to make sure that if you're progressing within a company, it demonstrates longevity, consistency, and uh, an emerging professionalism. I'm backing up a little bit, but on the recommendations, that's something that somebody else has to write. Correct. Us, right? That's right. Now, we may have time before noon to go into recommendations, uh, and I'll show you how that's done. You actually ask someone to recommend you, or they can do it unsolicited. Or if you write a recommendation for them, they'll get an automatic email that says, hey, why don't you recommend Sutton back? He was such a great guy to give you a recommendation. Okay, let's continue lower. I think we're getting to, uh, keep going. We're getting to skills. Okay, this is the area. These are what are called endorsements. Now, endorsements are different than recommendations. Here, if you're connected to someone and you have to be connected to them, you can... <laughs> yeah, you're, you, you've made some recommendations to me. <laughs> As you can see, Dennis here, he just went through and click, 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 click. <laughs> I do that from time to time. <laughs> On those moments, you have nothing to do. Yeah. Uh, endorsements actually are very important. Let me tell you why. You're building relationships, not connections. You may end up with a lot of connections, but if they go dead on you or do not stay warm, then they have less and less value. The goal is to build relationships. By the time you leave college here, you should probably have built maybe 100 relationships. You might have over 200 connections, but at least a hundred close enough relationships, you know who the people are. Endorsements was placed in LinkedIn instead of, in my day, if we had clients or people we worked with occasionally, but not often, we would get these little note cards, write them a note, how's your wife, how are the kids now, put it in an envelope, send it. That would be the equivalent of an endorsement. What does that do? That lets them know that you still think of them. And that's all endorsements are. Okay? If you haven't talked to one of your colleagues in a while, go to their profile, endorse them on a couple, not all of them. Don't go for all because you want to do it occasionally. Go to their profile, you're connected to them, 
click on the plus sign behind, beside the ones that you think you should endorse them all on. I go for three at a time normally. Okay? What happens? They will get an email message that says, hey, Sutton just endorsed you for this, this, and this. And you'll say, oh, that Sutton guy, isn't he great? And you might go into his and endorse him for a few things as well. In other words, all you're doing in a social media context is telling people you're still thinking of them. That's all an endorsement is. There's no way to validate any of this information. And there are two types of endorsements. You can create a new endorsement for them of a new keyword, or they can pre-populate their top skills area with the things they want to be endorsed on. So let's take a look at what this looks like underneath. So we go a little bit further down. So you notice 90, they only keep track of 99 endorsements. And if you hover over any of those photographs, you can see who's endorsing them. You might want to mine, M-I-N-E, some colleagues or potential employers' endorsements to see who else you could connect to. So if you hover over some of these, you might say, wow, that person, president of XMG International, damn, I think I should connect with them. So you'll click on there and go to their site and maybe make a request to connect with them. So what you're really viewing here are the people that you're connected to who have taken enough time to endorse you to show they're still thinking of you. And they're thinking of you simply in terms of keywords that should be describing what you do. You do not have to accept all of them. You notice here, um, if we could click on C10 plus with a right arrow, Dennis, it's near the bottom, uh, SEE -E, 10 plus. Sorry. Right there. Oh. Look at all the things I've been endorsed for. Big deal, right? In a way, it has no meaning. But for me, the meaning is that some people consider enough of me that they want to stay in touch. That's your way of staying in touch instead of writing the note. Because they'll get an alert saying that you endorse them for something. Now, if you don't want some of these anymore because there's too many of them, you can edit this section. Let's go up a bit, Dennis. Edit this section at the very top. Keep going. Great. Click the edit. If you do not want to be endorsed at all, just say no. None of this will show up. It is a very magnetic part of many people's sites. So I recommend for the first year or so you try it out. At the same time, we, oops, sorry, just a little bit up again. Include me in endorsement suggestions to my connections. That's what we call the nag screen that you get in blue above your profile every time you log in. It says, wow, you should be in, in endorsing George or Danny, right? If you don't want to see that anymore, click that off. But for me, the algorithm that LinkedIn uses checks to see whose site you have not been to in a long time, and they suggest those person for you to endorse. So it also helps you not to worry about how long ago it's been since you endorsed someone or talked to someone. Again, keep alive a relationship. Then another one says, show me suggestions to endorse my connections. I've turned that off, and now I don't see the blue screen whenever I go to their site that says, oh, you ought to endorse Danny for these things when you're on their site. Then send me notifications via email when connections endorse me. I keep that on, so I know when people are kind of letting them know, that, letting me know that they're still thinking about me. Then as we move down, you notice that there's an X sign beside a number of these different skills that have been created. And as you get lower, let's, oh, I like game development. Only two people have endorsed me for that. So I'm going to keep that one there. I think I'm a pretty good critical thinker. Let's delete that one. Now, whoever endorsed me for that will not know that that's disappeared. However, I try to keep these, you will see the top 10 appear, winnow them down once every quarter to only 10 down here. That way it won't get messy. 
So at some point, about every three months, I go through and I get rid of a bunch of them that I don't really think are important enough for me. Uh, nobody's ever uh, emailed me back saying, you know, two and a half months ago I endorsed you for that, it's disappeared. What's happening? Why did you do that? They, they're, they're operating at a velocity of the speed of light anyway. They can't remember. So they'll never call you on it. Try to keep these simple. 20 at the most. 10 at the at the very top and then 10 maybe below where it says see more because it'll show you your top 10. Questions in this area? Now again different than recommendations. Recommendations much more detailed so if you invite someone to recommend you and they endorse you because you get a little message saying hey Johnny endorsed me uh, you'll have to email them back and kind of say okay there's a difference between an endorsement and a recommendation. Let's go for the more detailed recommendation. This is the equivalent in Facebook of like, but it has a specific value of what they like. And we'll go uh, cancel in that area and we'll go lower. Thanks, Dennis. Next area is education. Now remember, you could put education under experience and you can put education in this section as well. So duplicate it. If you're at Westminster, have Westminster down here again. For those of you who go on for higher education, uh, there'll be a number of these, and the logos, again, are very important. And for searchability, uh, many uh, LinkedIn now has an algorithm that will present you with a list of alumni from the institutions you've been at that you might be wanting to connect with. Notice that under any institution, you can add a link or upload a file. Again, don't duplicate what you've done in the experience section, but this could, you're on a team in a class and someone took a photograph of it. That's great. Put it here and highlight what that was for. Mm -hmm. Can we put our actual degree or certificate? No. Uh, good question. The question was, do you put the actual degree or certificate here as a photocopy or a, a scanned image? No, do not. Because again, from an identity theft point of view, people could walk away with that. The fact you're stating it and in the resume you're applying somewhere that you've got it is good enough until you have to send transcripts. Most jobs will ask you for transcripts. So good question. Remember, identity theft is everywhere. Do not give away any more information than you need to, but at the same time, you're marketing yourself. And the fact you've got Westminster College, undergraduate business, and expected date of graduation if you haven't graduated yet. So you can put 2015 in the from to. Any areas I could clarify at this stage? Uh, real quick on the endorsement. Um, we don't want to see the nagging thing when we log in, but we're okay with other people being nagged. Being nagged. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is there, is that yeah. Stuff? Let's go back to that one and, and look. Go up a bit, Dennis, to the, the skills. Good. Keep going. And there. Let's edit here. So include me in endorsements to suggestions to my connections. That's definitely one you want. You want them to be nagged, yeah. all right? Show me suggestions to endorse my connection. If you don't want to see that, that's where you turn it off. And most of us, you get, you know, you don't get that many endorsements, but it's always good to know who's endorsing you. So I do recommend you keep on the send me notifications area. All right, we'll cancel out of that. Great. And we'll move down to the next section. So after education, and you can have all kinds of things in education. Again, even credentialing you do. What if you went for advanced first aid training? Sometimes that's important from a, a safety point of view in companies that would want to hire you. Definitely put it in there. A um, high school um, pool lifeguard? No. no. Not unless there's special certification that goes with that. 
All right. Uh, we'll go down further. Great. Additional information. Here you can add things you're interested in, keywords, that will help people find you when they do a search of LinkedIn for those keywords or even Google. Um, remember, this gets moved out to Google uh, within about 10 minutes of the time you save your changes. So if you want people to, if they're, I have some rather unusual interests. Alchemy, Hermeticism, Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism. These are not the common things. But guess what? Because I've got them out there, I've met people across the country and in other countries who have searched for people on LinkedIn when they came to visit the U.S. and happened to be in the West and arranged to have a coffee with me. I mean, this is where you don't want to put love cats, okay? That, 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 again, that's Facebook. You want to put interesting things about yourself that will attract people to you. Because one of the tools you want to use this for, just as we saw in that video, is that if you travel to another city to do an interview, one of the things you want to do is find out who your connections or their connections are in that city and meet a couple of people. LinkedIn is used constantly to arrange for a coffee or a breakfast somewhere. Now, there, there is an etiquette with this and a protocol. Uh, when I travel, uh, both nationally and internationally, I don't want to sit in a bar by myself drinking myself to a stupor. I mean, once or twice during my lifetime I've done that. It gets old fast. What I do is develop my business relationships. I find out people in my field who are in that city, maybe at another university, and I contact them through InMail, which is the messaging system of LinkedIn, and I set up a coffee or a breakfast, or potentially a lunch. Now, the protocol here is if the person you're meeting is of the opposite gender, you have to be careful. Okay? Because what you don't want to do is meet someone for dinner. Uh, like, I would never invite a woman to meet me for dinner in another city. Lunch, maybe. Breakfast, yes. Because these are all general, or very public areas that you can have. Find a place that's really well known for their breakfasts. Public areas. You don't meet people of the opposite sex for dinner in a country that you or in a city you've never met before. If you know them, that's different. Just be careful of the etiquette involved. The same would go would be true for women. You wouldn't invite a man out for dinner that you don't know. It's just normal caution. But breakfast or coffee is just fine. Now, if you don't drink coffee, a Starbucks has a fine selection of other beverages. So don't worry about but a Starbucks is a very public place. So it's your job to go to the Starbucks locator, find out what coffee shops are available, and make some suggestions when you do the invitation through InMail to meet you for breakfast or coffee. Okay? Expand your network. Meeting face-to-face -face is very important for building relationships. And it also means if you find people you're not connected to, Find a way to either connect to them through other people you know or first connect to them, indicating you're making a trip to a certain city for a job interview. You'd like to talk to them as well about opportunities in the field they're in. It makes for a great opener to allow you to meet and definitely learn about other people that in the future you may use or not in a manipulative point of view but in a utilitarian manner used to learn more about other companies and other opportunities. Don't put anything in personal details. Again, birth dates, all that, that's, that's uh, link, uh, Facebook. Advice for contacting Michael or yourself. I highly recommend you put this in the additional um, field because if they couldn't find your email in the contact tab, if they scroll down to the bottom and we're near the bottom, they will have found it here. So give an email address that they can contact you at. Let's go a bit further down, Dennis. Now, organizations, I actually, under employment history or experience, 
but the different organizations I'm a member of. I then just list them here. Again, a summary. No details. I put them in two places because if you have them under experience, when you ask to connect to someone, it will give you an option. Let me show you. Um, let's go to... All right. Uh, where's our president? There he is. All right. Let's say I've found someone that I want to connect to. Does anybody recognize this person? Okay. Now, I'm not currently connected to him. Notice, he only has 99 connections. I have uh, quite a few more. If I'm trying to build out my network, try to connect to people who have a large number of people they're connected to. Now, the reason Brian does not have a large number of connections is because as president of the college, he has made a social media decision, a personal decision, that he will not be using LinkedIn as a tool for him to expand his contacts. Nothing wrong with that. Some people do that. If I wanted to connect to Brian and I clicked on the connect button, notice he has set his settings that the only way I could try to send him an invitation if I knew his email. Now, if I wasn't at the college, I wouldn't know what that email is. But other options normally appear. Let's look at someone else. Um, okay. No, I don't think so. Yeah, that's too bad. Being in marketing. Uh, I'm, yeah, but I'm already connected with Linda. I'm trying to figure out someone I'm not connected. Uh, uh, oh, Michael Zarkin. Let's see if... Oh. He's got an insider. No, that's um, not the Michael Zirkin I'm thinking of. Like, uh, let's just put it here for a second. Because, oh, and he doesn't even have a connect button. Darn. It's hard to know who I'm not connected to. You won't be connected All to right. this guy. Is he there? Whoever you're thinking of? Nope. All right. Well, uh, go to one, one of those two. That, just go to Chris Piper for a second. Good. All right. Here's Chris Piper. Let's say I have looked at his background, and I'm very interested in connecting with him. Never click the connect button on the big lists that you sometimes are presented with of people you might know. Have you seen those lists? If you do that, they automatically receive a generic invitation. You have no chance to customize your invitation. Most individuals who send me a generic invitation, I don't connect with just because they haven't taken the time to look at my site and figure out what we have in common. Remember, you're building relationships, not connections. Now, some people who ask to connect to me are just not well trained in the area. When I look at their profile, I see, wow, they, we have a lot of people in common. Maybe they were busy that day, and I will accept their invitation. But most people who just send me a generic one, boom, delete. And you don't want to be one of those people deleted. That means every time you invite someone to connect, you want to begin the relationship. So let's assume for a moment that this person had a knowledge management background or degree. We click on connect. And this is what you're normally presented with. How do you know Chris? 
Did we work together somewhere before? Did we go to school together? Uh, have we done business together as business partners? Is he a friend, other, or I don't know Chris? Now take a look at what happens. Now, you're presented with a generic um, um, message, which you're going to overwrite if you're going to connect with him. But look what happens when I, I click on I don't know Chris. It's supposed to come up with a message saying, basically, you shouldn't be trying to connect to him. So never pick that option. Okay. Yeah, when you've done business together, that means every company or association that you have listed, you might be able to select one that you have in common. Okay. Uh, if you say friend, click on friend. Again, I I do not recommend that you send it out as a friend if you're not a friend. I've had people send out invitations. Hey, I'm a friend of yours, and this is coming from someone in nowhere Australia, right? Who I don't even know. So anyone pretending to be a friend of mine, delete. Now, under other, of course, that's where you supply an email address if you don't have anything else in common. If they do not have their email address, let's do a back for a moment. The, the Good. Now, remember, not everyone will put their contact information up here, like you have done. Let's click on contact and see if he's got an email address. Nope, he only has a Twitter account. So guess what i got to do if I want to figure out that I'd like to connect with him? What, do you, what would you do? If what? If you didn't know his email address, but that was the only way that you could connect with him. Ask him for his email. Uh, you could send an in-mail to him, that is correct, but then that creates a two-step or three-step cycle before you're connected with him. The other thing is you go to Google and search his name and his company and see if it comes up somewhere with an email address. Then you know his email address and you plunk it in here. But this is why from a courtesy point of view, you want to put your email address under contact so people don't have to work really hard to connect with you. Okay. Oh, you'd be able to find it here for sure. This is the one I wanted. Ah. So remember when you put in a company name down below and you get a logo and they have a page on LinkedIn, you can hover over any of these and get the actual company name. And go to that link if you wish. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Let us now proceed. Let's go back to where we were with my um, profile. And is that good? And great. One more time or two more times. All right. So let's go to the very bottom again. We were all right. Additional organizations. Here's recommendations. If you want to recommend someone, click on the edit. Or here are the ones I've received. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, go there. But here is where you manage your recommendations in the upper right hand corner of the recommendations area. If we click on that, it will bring up every uh, invitation where I was asked for a recommendation and every time I gave a recommendation. Click on one of those, either one, and that will have a list if we uh, move down. Oh, only one. Strange. Oh, click on the 39. The actual number in red. No. Hmm. It used to, Ah, there we go. Thank you. So these are all the people that... Um, I have asked for recommendations or have recommended me. So I can manage this and know who I've recommended before. All right, let's uh, go out of this area. And back again. And there we are, down at the bottom. So again, here's customizing visibility of your connections. Let's click on that one for a second. This will not be valid. Let me let's get it in there for, for most of you.
right now, as you're building your connections, this will not be generally valid for you. But as you grow your connections, you can actually stop people from seeing who you're connected to. Now, why would you do this? Anyone want to guess? All right. Yes. The idea of introductions. If I know somebody that they want to be introduced to, they can see it when they go to my profile because at the bottom of my profile it shows which connections are shared and they can see all of my connections if they're connected. So this is just one of those things at some point you may want to shut people out from seeing all your connections. Most people do not. I do not at this stage myself simply because I'm trying to stimulate learners to go through me with an introduction to get to somebody that they want to know. But there are significant C-level executives who do not show their connections anymore. But they still keep them for themselves. We'll cancel out of that. Now, what was one of the other things um, that you had asked about before we finished? We got recommendations. All right. Let, let's go to one of my connections. All right. J just a second. Just a second. Um, my connections are seen. Let's done editing. Go to the top. Yeah. Done editing. And then, um, yeah, let's try that. That's one place to look at. Good. Just a second. Okay. A question you had? Right. All right. So the question was, when you see individuals that you're searching for that have a first or a second or a third by their name, so let's look at one of those right now. Um, Let's go back to whoever Chris was, or anybody. Put in a name of somebody you know that I don't know. Good question. Piper Young is fine. Anything to get up a name. Okay. Now, the question that was asked is, what does that number mean? Okay. LinkedIn is built upon a theory that all individuals because of the speed business is moving today, are only seven, six to seven degrees away from everyone else. In other words, I could go to a city in Shanghai and be at a conference there, and I could find somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows me. That's how close-knit the theory says we are on the planet. So if that says third, whoops, we'll go to the top of that. That means he's three degrees away from me. In other words, let's go down the right-hand side. Whoop, right, right there. Good. So here's me. I know somebody who's connected to somebody else who knows somebody else who knows him. Three degrees away. So it can calculate your whole network of connections and the people you're connected to and that they're connected to to see how close you are. And if you want to be introduced to Christian, if we go to the, oh, no, uh, you're going to be presented with a number of choices. But if we go back up to the top, to get an introduction, let's say, and any of you can send me an invitation to connect with you. I will connect. Uh, when you send me that in invitation and we're connected, in the drop-down list, it says, send Christian an in-mail. If you see someone and you notice I'm connected to them, no, uh, sorry, that'll actually bring up an in-mail. Let's go back. It's the drop-down list. Oh, okay, maybe it didn't happen. Good. Uh, normally on this list, because this individual has said he wants no more connections, that option has disappeared from this drop-down list. If you wish... If you 
knew one of these people really well. Right. So click on one of those. Yeah, but it doesn't do the actual introduction process the same. Uh, the introduction process normally requires you to be connected to someone. The second All right. Level one. Great. Thanks. So, if you want to get introduced to Lori, and we've noticed who you're connected to on the right hand side, let's go to that side as well. Uh, the there. Uh, further? There. All right. So I'm connected to these people and who are connected to a number of people who are connected to Lori. I want to connect to Lori. Okay. Let's go back up and, and select Get Introduced. So this allows you to introduce yourself, but you have to go through someone else. So this is called a warm introduction as opposed to a cold introduction where you send them an email saying, I don't have your email address, I'd like to connect. Here, you would choose your connection from a drop-down list of any of the people you know you'd like to go through. Once you do that, we'll pick one right now. We're not going to complete this totally. You would basically be telling that person why you want to connect to the target person. So that whole message goes to one of your connections and that person adds another memo that says, hey, I know Jory really well. I think it would be really good for you to spend 10 minutes talking to, with them on the phone. And if it has to go through another one, they add a message. So these are all what are called certified messages. People who know the previous person and you have a chain of them, and it finally gets to your target, and you then will get the introduction. So instead of going direct to direct, and because most of you are using non-premium, you only have a couple in-mails you can send, and you can't connect to people that are th more than two degrees away. You can't send a connection. You've got to use an introduction. So use that. If there are people who I know, please go through me. I'll add information about you. Never met the person before in my life. Don't know who they are, but go ahead. Accept their invitation. Are you still with me? That wasn't funny, eh? Okay. I think we're starting to zone out. This is the completion of the boot camp. I will be gi giving another much more advanced. You have to have at least gotten enough of the concepts here and practiced, I will be providing a two two-hour advanced sessions in the spring, two separate ones. So a, an advanced and then even more advanced. And in each of those we'll cover in more depth recommendations, how to uh, see, well, um, no, most of you will have the basic one, not the premium one. Otherwise, you could see how people are looking at you. Can you see at this stage in the basic one if people are viewing you? Can you see a yeah? percentage on the, okay. how the percentage changes over time? All right. Can you see faces? Probably not. not sure. All right. Let, let's just go to mine for a second um, under the, the top menu, very top, and under profile, and under who's viewed your profile. When you have... Is this what you can see? Something like this? Uh, yes. All right. Let's go down a little further, Dennis. Basically, you can... Can you also see this on the basic one? Okay. Great. You can always see who's looking at you. And with that, that means if somebody looks at you and they look like an interesting person, you might want to go to their profile as well. And that will up the count, you know? The more people look at you, the higher your um, uh, ranking is amongst people being searched in LinkedIn. On the advanced courses, do you talk a lot about, about um, publishing content? Yes, yes. Sorry that I can only cover so much in a couple hours. Thanks for showing up. What you have available to you for reference material are three different attempts by companies to show you 
how to build a really good profile. So I've given you three separate examples and it shows the kind of things you should be entering in this area and it should help you to build out your profile. When you're at the point that you've built it out and you'd like some constructive criticism, email me your URL and if we're connected it'll be very easy for me to look you up. Okay, thanks very much for showing up. Appreciate it. Did you want some? Did you want? Yeah. Thanks very much. And thank you for joining up. Yeah. I'll let you know when the advancements are. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks.